Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. In today's video, we'll be going over set operations using Venn diagrams. I've already done some lessons kind of like this one, but I'm going to try to make this more of a fast-paced, all-in-one lesson for basic set operations using Venn diagrams. And this is a viewer-requested video. I always appreciate those viewer requests, so be sure to leave your requests down in the comments. We're going to try to go over set unions, intersections, relative complements, absolute complements, and the symmetric difference in this lesson. And for each operation, we'll begin with a quick definition using set builder notation. So what is the union of two sets? A union B. Here is the definition in set builder notation. The union of two sets A and B is the set containing all elements that are in A or B. And remember that or means the element can be in just A, it can be in just B, or it can be in A and B. That's what the union is, and that's how you write it. And in Venn diagram form, this is what it looks like. I am shading A union B. The union of two sets is the set containing all of the elements that are in either set. That is what set union looks like. So basically, just put the two sets together. And let me just jot down an actual example. So here is an actual example of set union in action. Let's move on to the next operation. Let's talk about set intersection next. We'll jot down a quick definition in set builder notation. So here is the definition. The intersection of two sets A and B is kind of just what the operation sounds like. It's the set containing all elements that are in both A and B. So if we wanted to shade the intersection of these two sets, what would that look like? Well, like the name says, it's just where the sets intersect. So this kind of almond looking shape here in the middle. That is A intersect B. It's the set containing the elements that are in A and in B. And here is an actual example of set intersection. All right, so that is set intersection. That takes care of the two most common set operations. Let's move on to the next one. All right, now we will talk about the relative complement, which you might also know as set subtraction. The relative complement is sometimes written like this, which looks like A minus B, but I think the more standard notation, in my experience, is this. And we read this as the relative complement of B with respect to A. And here's what it's equal to in set builder notation. So there is the definition of relative complement in set builder notation. The relative complement of B with respect to A is the set containing all elements of A that are not elements of B. So what's that going to look like in the Venn diagram? Well, again, it's all elements of A that are not elements of B. So it's all of this stuff here, shading the relative complement of B with respect to A. And this visual probably makes it clear why this is sometimes thought of as set subtraction. It kind of looks like A minus B. And that is basically what we're doing. We're taking all of the elements that are in B out of A which leaves us with this piece here. And if we wanted to, we could also shade the relative complement of A with respect to B. And that would look like this, all of the elements that are in B but are not in A. So notice that this is our first operation that is not symmetric. The relative complement of A with respect to B is not necessarily equal to the relative complement of B with respect to A. But with that said, let me get it back to the original shading, and let me write out an actual example for you before we move on. All right, so that is the relative complement of two sets. That's what it looks like in a Venn diagram, and there is an example. Let's move on to the next one. Now, instead of the relative complement, we are talking about the absolute complement. In order to consider the absolute complement, we have to have what's called a universal set in our problem. The universal set is represented by this big green rectangle. 
and the universal set contains all of the objects we're considering. So for example, we might be working in a problem where we're only considering real numbers. Then we might decide that the universal set should be the set of all real numbers. If we have a universal set that we're working with, we can talk about absolute complements. First, I'll write out the absolute complement of A, which is sometimes written as A prime, or sometimes as A with a C, in the superscript. There's also a number of other notations for the absolute complement, but here's what it's equal to in set builder notation. So if we have a universal set U that we are working with, the absolute complement of a set A is the set of all elements in the universe that are not in the set A. And of course, we could just as easily replace these A's with B's. All right, so what does the absolute complement look like in a Venn diagram? First, let's shade the absolute complement of A. The absolute complement of A is the set containing all elements in the universe that are not in the set A. That's what I'm shading now. All right, so that is the absolute complement of A. It contains everything in the universe that is not in A. And remember, the so-called universe will depend on the problem we're doing. Now, just for the sake of completion, let's also shade the absolute complement of B. The absolute complement of B contains all elements that are in the universe, but are not in the set B. All right, so there is the absolute complement of B. Now, let me just jot down a quick example. Let's say that this is our universal set, the set containing 0, 1, 2, and 3. All right, so with that universal set and that set A, that is the absolute complement of A. All right, on to the last operation. The last operation we are talking about is the symmetric difference. The symmetric difference of two sets A and B is usually written like this, but there are some other notations as well. Here's what it's equal to in set builder notation. So the symmetric difference of A and B is the set containing all elements that are in the union of A and B, but that are not in the intersection of A and B. This means that the symmetric difference of A and B contains all of A and B except for their common elements. In Venn diagram form, that will look like this. This is the symmetric difference of A and B. So you can see that the symmetric difference contains all of A and B except for their intersection. Now let me write you out an example. So there you've got a nice example. You can see that the symmetric difference contains all of the elements in the two sets except for their common elements. All right, so that is a brief tour through how to represent a bunch of different set operations using Venn diagrams. I hope this video helped you understand how to represent these operations using Venn diagrams. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or if you have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And I'm actually going to grab my guitar and play a song live for the outro. See you all next time. This is a song I wrote called Snooze Fest. Why do I run away from things I used to want? Why Calibri? What's wrong with Times New Roman font? Twelve point used to always be the joint. The more I change, the more I know, the more I get annoyed.